Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Wednesday, August 2nd, around 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. A coronal mass ejection is headed our way based on telemetry and a halo ejection. Boom. Ready? Wait for it. Not there. Right here. Boom. And so tele the plasma model here, the plasma wind model, solar wind model here from ISWA showing a significant coronal mass ejection that could hit Earth in just the next two days on the 4th, maybe into the 5th. Keep calm. It's boom time. Heavy rain and severe weather expected Wednesday evening in St. Louis. Heads up, there is a flash flood risk with St. Louis in the center of the bullseye as the Farmer's Almanac releases winter 23-24 forecast. And it's going to be cold, cold, chilled, frosty cold, unseasonably cold, and wintry temps. So this winter will be quite spectacular for the entire country with extra snow, extra cold, and extra wet. Speaking of wet, the U.S. drought monitor is showing most of the U.S. out of severe and exceptional and extreme drought, except for the middle of the country here. A small exceptional and extreme drought here in Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, and in several other states and small areas. Hopefully, we will get some moisture moving into those regions later this summer. We'll take a quick look at the GFS model on the total accumulated precipitation, and it's showing that many of those regions and drought are going to be picking up rain, including central Texas. So that's good news. It might just be a little down here, but they need any rain. Iowa is going to be slathered with the wet stuff, and Iowa is in need in most of the state uh, showing up here in Peach Severe drought, yes. Yeah. So, good news for areas in drought. Now, did you know yesterday, 47 years ago, was Colorado's deadliest natural disaster? Well, now you do. And it was flooding, flash flooding. It had nothing to do with climate change, just like the flooding is being blamed on now for climate change. But I do digress. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the Big Thompson Flood became one of the state's deadliest and costliest disasters. The National Weather Service said that an estimated 2,500 to 3,500 people drove to the area to stay in one of Colorado's most scenic spots to celebrate 100 years of Colorado. The bad news is that on the afternoon of July 31st, heavy rain over a 70-square-mile region from 6.30 to 11 p.m., began to fall. The heaviest rainfall between 12 and 14 inches fell on the western side of the canyon. Water levels rose quickly and raged through the canyon corridor. According to the National Weather Service, the flood lasted through the early morning of August 1st of 1976. And the destruction was complete. Many people were simply washed away while they were sleeping. According to the USGS, 144 people died in the flood and many were campers staying along the river. The flood also destroyed 418 homes, 52 businesses, numerous bridges, paved and unpaved roads, and power and telephone lines. US 34 was washed out as a 10-foot wide boulders were carried down the river. Holy macaroni. Flash flood warning in effect. Heads up. Excessive heat and critical fire weather concerns. Flash flood concerns today aided by tropical moisture and a stationary frontal boundary will focus showers and thunderstorms over parts of Iowa, Missouri, and Illinois. To the south of this rainfall, dangerous to record-breaking heat will expand across the south and southwest. The heat, gusty winds, and low humidity levels could result in rapid spread of wildfires across the southern plains. So please keep your cigarette butts inside the car. Now, smart O&M platform detects hail-related damages in photovoltaic systems, which is going to be needed as the hail increases worldwide. Here is an example of what just happened in Italy, where record-breaking hail in a five-day period broke record after record of the all-time largest hail in Europe. Once held, I believe, by Romania, now Italy holds the gold chalice. And 
Any photovoltaic systems in Italy would have been greatly damaged. Any hail above three centimeters can damage photovoltaic systems, and the new ONM platform detects hail-related damages in your PV system. So you can actually run a test and see how many of these panels are actually usable and how many have been destroyed, which is good news that we'll be needing in the future. Seismic update, no quakes of note. Most recent rumbler is the largest on the map at 5.9 south-southwest of Rio Grande. Not anywhere near actual Rio Grande. This is Rio Grande, Panama. So there is the quake, and it's a surface quake, so no other warnings are needed. Overall, very quiet across the globe. Worldwide Volcano News Update, not so much there. We had a large explosive puff earlier today. Popo, Ducono, Reventador, Sangay, and many others. Puffing and passing today, Reventador to 15, Popo to 20,000, Sangay to 19,000, Ducono to 7,000 feet. We also have Stromboli, actually, a little lava flow. Take a look at that. And here we have... Some new data coming in from Reckianus Volcano. Activity decreased significantly. You can see it all leveling off here and here. And here is the lava discharge, been decreasing steadily, as well as the lava volume leveling off. And the prediction is that this volcanic eruption may come to a close in just the next week or so. As we turn on the fake audio... This little cinder cone is still quite active as most of the lava is fed into the field by lava tubes and is no longer visible on the surface. You can just see some slight glow there beneath the surface. The only visible activity if you're at the site is from the cinder cone itself. And we will share with you the new lava map which is on the update here. Reckianus Volcano Update, new lava flow map. Here is the cinder cone, here are the lava fields. Cinder cone there. Here are the lava fields, and this is the overlap from the 2022 eruption, and it's all moving south into the Meldalir Valley. So all the links will be below for you to check out. We've been waiting for some geomagnetic storms to manifest, but it really didn't get there. There was a phi angle shift about 12 hours ago today that did send the KP index up slightly, but it only reached KP4, not even a scare. So hopefully the next system here, a faint earth-directed CME that we showed you on the opening here uh, that just happened today will bring us some auroral activity. Now coronal dimming was observed this morning following an upper C-class flare around AR3386 as it began to turn around the limb. Hello, earth facing quiet. The event looks to have produced a faint halo coronal mass ejection. The aforementioned CME is predicted to pass Earth sometime on August 4th and to the 5th. Currently, minor G1 geomagnetic storm is expected. As we look at ISWA here, taking a look at that CME hitting Earth. Boom, right there. Here is Soho Movie Maker as we're looking at Lasco C2. There is the Halo CME. So... Let's take a look at the detailed forecast. Not showing much. Just a slight rise here. Maybe potentially to geo one me geomagnetic storm for about six hours. Hours of power is potentially 12. So stay tuned and look up tomorrow night for the aurora and the site. Now, moving on to the solar cycle. We are at in solar cycle 25 here. The pink is solar cycle 24, which was one of the weakest cycles in 200 years. And solar cycle 25 is still weaker than 24 by just a few sunspots on the smooth curves. This is the latest update from the July data. So no, solar cycle 25 is not stronger than 24 already. The second peak of 24 on the smooth data is still higher than 25 is currently. If we look at similar amplitude solar cycles, well, you can see here black is 24, and here is the level of 25, still below the threshold. And it may be that we are going to have a similar solar cycle here to solar cycle 13 back in 1890, where there's just a single peak, and then it drops off quite early. So stay tuned for more updates. 
Cosmic question mark spotted in deep space suggests the universe is stumped, and we agree. Webb Space Telescope is casting the universe in a new light, but the Space Telescope discovery of a cosmological question mark has us scratching our heads. And that is not photoshopped. That is really in space. It just happens to be the angle at which it's sitting. And whatever's going on here, the universe is questioning everything. No, I'm not making this up. And in fact, right down here, this little tiny dot is that question mark. The image released last week shows Herbig, Harrow 4647, and an apparent question mark in deep space as shown by the indicators at the bottom here. So that little baby is this question mark. And it's anyone's guess what it is. Look at these galaxies far away at the edge of the universe, supposedly. These are billions of years old, and the, the standard model of cosmology is not a question mark. It's garbage. The first ivory work of art recovered from the World Heritage Cave, Holfels, was believed to be a horse until archaeologists made a new discovery. Now take a look at this amazing carving. Look at the mouth, the nose, the eye, the detail. For more than 20 years, the first ivory work of art recovered from the World Heritage Cave, Holfels, was believed to be a horse until archaeologists made a new discovery. During excavations at the cave in Holfels in Swabian Jura, Near Scheiklingen, archaeologists recently recovered a fragment of a carefully carved ivy figurine that gives one of the most famous Ice Age works of art a new look. The figurine fragment turned out to be a piece of a body that was perfectly adapted to an animal figurehead for the, found more than 20,000 years ago. They actually found a piece of the original discovery. The head, recovered in 1999, became famous as it was the first ivory figurine found in Hofels and had previously been interpreted as part of a giant horse. Professor Nicholas Conrad, team from the Department of Prehistory and Coordinary Ecology at the University of Tübingen, is now questioning this assessment, as well as Diamond. We still cannot identify the animal species depicted with certainty, but it could be a cave lion or a cave bear. Yeah, it's a cave bear. Or I'm square. Now this carving, not only is it spectacular, but it is old. It is very old. It's estimated to be, where is the date? I believe around 35,000 35, years ago is when it was carved. Now who carved it? Well, it could be this woman. This is the stunning likeness of Zlatikun, the oldest modern human to be genetically sequenced. Researchers created a facial, facial approximation of a 45,000-year-old individual who's believed to be the oldest anatomically modern human ever to be genetically sequenced. And Homo sapiens sapien, the same as me or you, is right here at 45,000 years ago, and we were carving spectacular cave bears out of ivory. Our history is being hidden from us, and it slowly trickles out through some channels in archaeological and anthropological circles. But the facts that the textbooks still tell nothing but lies is an embarrassment to science. And that is a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. I hope you got something out of the video. Become a Patreon. Support our work and watch all of our podcasts commercial free in one place. And most importantly, be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. Yeah,